Mr. Speaker, I rise in opposition to the bill. At the outset, though, I want to congratulate our subcommittee chair on shepherding her very first bill to the House floor. The bill before us uh, provides $62.2 billion for the Department of State, Foreign Operations, and Related Programs. That's a 12% uh, increase, Mr. Ch uh, Speaker, over the fiscal year uh, 21 uh, enacted level. The bill provides important funding for our national security, including $3.3 billion for Israel. The recent conflict between Israel and Hamas and the looming shadow of Hezbollah and Iran remind us all of the threats Israel faces to its security every day. The fighting in Gaza stopped when it did in part due to the diplomatic efforts of Egypt. As Secretary of State Blinken told the committee, Egypt was vital to helping arrange the ceasefire and remains an essential partner for the United States in the region, Egypt. While the bill maintains funding for Egypt at the current level, I strongly disagree with additional conditions that this bill places on uh, uh, Egypt. The bill continues critical funding for Jordan, supports countries facing Russian aggression, and provides resources to meet our commitments in the Indo-Pacific, including 300 million for the Countering Chinese Influence Fund. The bill provides funding for Colombia, our good ally and friend at last year's level. This is a critical moment for that country, and we should be doing all we can to support them. However, I regret that new conditions that this bill places uh, could undermine our counter-narcotics efforts, which are critical uh, in uh, Colombia. Our programs there are in our own self-interest, especially given the amount of cocaine that still floods American streets and causes so much destruction in our communities back home. Another drug problem sowing chaos back home is the opioid epidemic. The bill includes new language that directs the State Department to expand their current efforts to tackle the opioid crisis and better address this terrible problem. Mr. Speaker, I wish I could stop there and say this is a good bill. Unfortunately, the spending increases outside of these critical areas is just too great. And the policy writers are too extreme. First and foremost, are changes made to the longstanding measures that protect the sanctity of life. These are common sense provisions that have enjoyed bipartisan support for decades. Of greatest concern is the removal of the most important condition in any state foreign operations bill, that no funds can be used to pay for abortion. The removal of that language is unprecedented, but it doesn't stop there. The bill also includes a permanent prohibition of the Mexico City policy, weakens the kemp Caston restrictions on coercive abortion, increases funding to the UN, among many other controversial changes. Another tough bill, a pill, for the American taxpayer to swallow is the more than $3 billion included in this bill for environmental programs that bring a high potential for duplication, wasteful complexity, and substantial oversight challenges. The bill also increases funding for the United Nations and other international organizations while ignoring the need 
for long overdue and desperately needed reforms. The absence of conditions on the World Health Organization is particularly concerning given what we all know about their complicity in covering up the COVID-19 outbreak. Despite some areas of agreement, the unrestrained spending and unprecedented partisan riders require that I oppose this legislation, and I therefore urge my colleagues to oppose this bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I yield uh, a reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman from Kentucky.